so now welcome to derivatives of a power series. So again, recall a power series uh, in x minus x naught takes the form the sum from n equals zero to infinity of a sub n times x minus x naught to the n, where a sub n are constants. So we get a little theorem for how we can go about taking the derivatives. Uh, suppose that f of x is defined by the power series from n equals zero to infinity of a sub n times x minus x naught to the n um, with radius of convergence r. Um, then essentially we can differentiate term by term. Notice the very first term will just go to zero. And so we can eliminate uh, that term in our derivative. And the very first term is just our constant term. So with radius convergence r, then we can differentiate term by term. And the derivatives will all have radius of convergence r. So again, if we're differentiating term by term, we get uh, f prime of x would be the sum from n equals one to infinity, because the a sub zero term or the zero term will just go to derivative zero, we can ignore it. Then we would have n times a sub n times x minus x naught to the n, just using power rule. And chain rule in this case, derivative of the inside x minus x naught is one. Um, similarly, the second derivative, we would be looking at the sum from n equals two to infinity. Oh, sorry, this should be to the n minus one power rule, power drops. So for the first derivative, we should have the sum from n equals one to infinity of the n times a sub n times x minus x naught to the n minus one. Power rule should drop that power and we multiply by n out front. If we run the power rule again, you would have an n times n minus one times a sub n and then times x minus x naught to the n minus two, dropping the power one more time. Uh, again, now we're starting at n equals two, since in f prime, the n equals one term is just constant. So the derivative would be zero. So let's go ahead and consider the function uh, f of x equals the sum from n equals zero to infinity of negative one to the n times one over three to the n times x to the n. So our job is to find the first three derivatives. So we know f prime of x, we would do the sum from n equals one to infinity. Then we'll have n times negative one to the n times one over three to the n times x to the n minus one. So again, all the stuff in front of that x to the n is just constant, uh, it comes along for the ride. We're really just differentiating that x to the n. 
for our second derivative, we take the sum from n equals two to infinity of n times n minus one times negative one to the n times one over three to the n times x to the n minus two. If we wanted to take a third derivative, we would do the sum from n equals three to infinity of n times n minus one times n minus two, power rule one more time, times negative one to the n times one over three to the n times x to the n minus three. Um, again, these all have the same radius of convergence. So we could just use the um, very first radius of convergence. So these all have the same radius of convergence. which we could find by doing the limit as n goes to infinity of the absolute value of negative one to the n plus one times one over three to the n plus one divided by negative one to the n times one over three to the n. Uh, this winds up just being the limit as n goes to infinity of um, one over three. So we just get one third. So we would have radius of convergence equal to three. All right, um, just a quick note. Uh, note for any function f of x, equal to the sum from n equals zero to infinity of a sub n times x minus x naught to the n. If we look at um, the nth derivative, uh, let's, instead of nth derivative, let's look at the kth derivative. If we look at the kth derivative of x, um, we are looking at um, a sum from n equals k to infinity of we'd have n times n minus one all the way down to n minus k. Uh, sorry, all the way down to n minus uh, k minus one times a sub n times x minus x naught raised to the n minus k. Let me update my screen. Again, so we're looking at n times n minus one all the way down to n minus in parentheses k minus one. All of that times a sub n times x minus x naught to the n minus k. And note that if we plug in x naught, that we're just looking at that very first term. And it winds up being uh, k factorial, k 
because n would be equal to k, we'd go k times k minus one all the way down just to one times a sub k. Uh, and then times nothing because we'd have raised to the zeroth power. Right? So times x minus x naught to the zeroth power. And then all the other terms would be zero. So we just get k factorial times a sub k. Uh, what this means then is that our a sub k or our a sub n, if we want to rename them. So we have a sub k as just given by taking the kth derivative at x naught and dividing by k factorial or equivalently a sub n is equal to the nth derivative of f evaluated at x naught divided by n factorial. So um, we have something called the Taylor series. So the Taylor series of f uh, about x naught or at x naught uh, is given by f of f is equal to the sum from n equals zero to infinity of a sub n times x minus x naught raised to the n, where a sub n is defined in the exact manner we found it should be defined previously. A sub n is just the nth derivative of f evaluated at x naught divided by n factorial. So this is the Taylor series. Um, note if f x naught is equal to zero, we call this the Maclaurin series. So we have a special case, which is if x naught is equal to zero, then the Taylor series is called the Maclaurin series. I forget how to spell that. Let me just check it quickly. Again, it's called the Maclaurin series. Uh, I should also say the correct language is to say the series about x naught instead of at x naught. Um, so we'll be working a little with Taylor series, uh, common functions, e to the x, cosine x, sine x. You can fairly easily find the Taylor series um, using this rule.